Thank you all for coming uh, to the second research seminar series. Dr. Zenith has been very active lately on academic integrity, academic dishonesty, and something that has been very popular, especially in the UAE. And today is good. she's going to talk more about this and how to ignite this whole integrity domain within the UAE and definitely within Wallaco. Thank you so much. So what we are focusing on today is contract cheating under the microscope. So of course, the topic of academic integrity is very big. Um, there are a lot of different types of things students are doing out there, faculty are doing out there. Uh, but what we are focusing on specifically is contract cheating for this session. Okay. I have to be on here. OK. Right, so academic integrity naturally is, of course, the foundation of education. Um, it's something that everybody has talked about. Everybody wants to ensure that we are um, achieving some kind of integrity in the kind of research work we do, kind of the way, uh, way we assess our students, and the way students ultimately, of course, learn. Um, interestingly, um, 100 years ago in the 18th centuries, um, between 18th and 19th centuries, people didn't really think much about integrity in work. They thought it was a light type of honor to actually copy somebody's work and then put it forward. It, the copying concept was actually looked on more as a kind of compliment to that person. Of course, uh, by 1900s, that concept slowly changed. Uh, now we focus a lot more on fairness, on honesty and truth. We want people to be responsible for the work that they do. We want them to, be, to respect other people's work and obviously to give um, credit where it is due. Okay, this is not working, so I'm just going to go with that. Okay, so the current situation in uh, academic integrity, just generally, I'm just going to go through a few of the um, scandals that have er happened around the globe. Uh, in 2002, we had a vice chancellor in Monash University who, who was asked to resign over cases of plagiarism that uh, came up as he uh, went through his career. Harvard University, of course, faced its own share of scandal in 2012 when 100 plus students were found um, cheating in their take-homes uh, take exams. Australian universities in 2015 were um, embroiled in contract cheating specifically, uh, where a lot of the universities were found, their students were found to have been using particular companies to buy essays and then submit them. And we, in fact, had a few universities that uh, revoked the degrees even after the students had actually graduated. Stanford had their scandals. Bihar schools in India had the scandal in 2015. They unfortunately had similar scandals again last year in 2016. Uh, in Nigeria, US Indian universities sacked professors over 2016, the whole academic year, over cases of plagiarism. And of course, the most famous one was um, Melania Trump and uh, uh, Obama's speech. So basically, the idea is when, it, when a scandal happens, it's bad, obviously, for the institution because it makes them look bad, but it's fantastic for academic integrity because people are suddenly talking about the issue. So in the bigger sch scheme of things where academic integrity is, we want people to talk about it. We want people to feel comfortable coming up and actually sharing their stories and their cases, what's happening in their un universities. Um, I've just put a few snapshots of newspaper articles from across the globe on different um, areas of study. This was about a nursing um, a student's issue. This one is about just generally about students using technology, university students feeding cheating crisis. Harvard, again, with their MOOC educations, um, Ohio State University, Stanford again, plagiarism epidemic. 50,000 students were caught. This was a UK one that happened in 2016. And of course, the Bihar scandal that happened. So scandals overall generally are really good for this kind of issues because when it happens, yes, people want to talk about that institution, but people just generally start talking about the problem. They start talking among themselves about the problem. And that's when people come together and say, hey, yes, you know what? This, I think this is happening here, and I think it's happening there. Let's look at this problem more closely. So scandals are bad for the institutions, but on a bigger scale of things, they're actually very good for the issue itself, because then people start talking about it. We ta start taking it seriously. More research gets done on it. And hopefully, we look at ways to curb the problem as well. Um, technology added to the mix has not made our lives any easier, whether it's as teachers or researchers or ge generally for academics in general. Um, there is the concept that te technology is making cheating a lot, lot easier. Uh, it's just 
older te techniques with newer technology. That's what's happening out there. And where we were struggling to include technology to make our studies and subjects more interesting for students, um, students are using technologies to make lessons easier for them in their own terms. Uh, we are not dig digital natives, they are. They are born into technology. They know how to use that technology to, to get that ad added advantage that they're looking for. Um, we coined this term e-cheating in 2007. Basically, it defines uh, different forms of um, academic misconduct that's being used, uh, done using in um, ICTs, like in um, different types of technology. I've actually got some samples here such as this um, app, if it's on a mobile phone, if you put it on your, um, uh, on a sum, it in automatically gives you the, I've got some students in the audience and they're smiling. These are not ideas for you, <laughs> but this is what is happening. Um, we've got these wonderful apps that just show you the working as well and then it finally gives you the answer. Of course, you've got the wristwatches that do all the work for you as well. This is a bit uh, elaborate but archaic. Uh, compared to the rest of the technology that I'm showing. Uh, this, this is a technique we've actually seen students trying in, even in this country where you know they do this beautifully done, creative, innovative labels on bottles. Then they bring the water bottles in. Nobody says no to water bottles. But you know if you turn it around, they've got the formulas written at the back. Then of course, we've got all these Bluetooth devices, such as the glasses, the ring, and the earplugs. These earplugs, again, are very popular in this market. Um, they're really tiny. You get them for about 1,000 dirhams on uh, eBay. And uh, if you put them on, it's very difficult to detect, particularly for girls and girls wearing shellas. So in either case, it becomes very difficult to detect. Um, they're Bluetooth devices, so you can connect them to your phone, to somebody's watches, to, uh, to a uh, laptop, and then you could easily be getting the answers that you're looking for. So these are just some technologies that people are looking at to use, students are looking at to use, um, to give them that added advantage that they're looking for. Right? So where there are these technologies that they're using, we've got our own little group of technologies that we have handy to us. The ones that we use, of course, is turnitin.com, but there are a host of other softwares out there, plus online sites out there, which are there to help people um, um, check, check out two documents to see if anybody's copied. There are synonym checkers now, they, it's, so it's not just copy and paste, they're also checking for you if somebody just copied a paragraph and changed a little bit here and there, just to see whether they're really copying or not. Um, Turnitin, we've had a lot of discussion, we had a workshop on this last week, a lot of faculty members said yeah but you know it's so easy to get around turn it in you know you white it out or you put in an image but turn it in is coming up with their own set of ways to capture those information as well so the technology is also coming up to help us um, ensure we are able to uh, maintain the academic integrity that we are looking to maintain in our institutions but what has happened is with all these tech similarity softwares that are out there, um, it is of course making very hard for students to just simply copy and paste. So they need to do something more than just copying and pasting. And unfortunately, what they have looked towards is buying the essays. Um, Traditionally, this used to be asking a senior student to do the assignment for you. They'd have paid some, some maybe lump sum amount, and they would have gotten an assignment done. Now it is a full-fledged industry out there where you have thousands of online um, companies that are waiting for students to approach them, and they themselves are approaching students as well, offering their amazing uh, craftsmanship in writing essays, which are of course plagiarism free, and they're very good quality English work as well. So, and of course, with the whole concept of e-commerce being so easy where you can you know, do everything online on your phone, for students, this has become very, very easy to just go online in any of these sites, re request for an essay, put in the subject outline, say this is what we are looking for, and get students to write back, the, uh, the company to write back their um, assignments. It's, it's a warning because a lot, of, a lot of this work goes under the radar because it doesn't come up as copy and pasted. It looks like a perfect piece of assignment. It's got all the right citations in all the right places. It uses all the right big words for that subject not necessarily for the assignment itself. And that's the catch. That's where we as academics need to be cautious about it. Uh, why do students do it? From things like poor academic performance to uh, having done cheating in the past, knowing that you know it's an easy way out, let's find an easier way out 
uh, student syndrome basically translating to them being lazy not doing the work on time and trying to finish it on the day before or the night before the submission and they know if they submit something on turn it in which it's done on the last minute and they're copying and pasting it will show up so then the next best thing for them to do is go online find a company and the companies have got these amazing services where they'll say we can do it right for you in 24 hours we can write an assignment for you in three hours we can write an assignment for you in one week and of course the price varies depending on your requirements so they'll do it because they're lazy purely sometimes because they've got just very poor time management they're just not good at the way they're managing all their assignments and it just hits them all at one go with their midterms and so on and so forth uh, maybe because they've just become too embroiled in extracurricular activities uh, universities do push to have a very enriching experience on campuses outside of classrooms but sometimes for some students that becomes too much because they get too involved in those extracurricular activities and then when they realize they have a submission deadline they don't know what to do. Uh, job commitments, we do get few students who are actually working and then again, same thing, they're like, their concept, and we've actually spoken to a few of these students and they say, I already have a job, I just need this degree, it's just a paper. So sometimes they don't understand the significance of the knowledge that they're taking away out of the classroom. And again, that comes back to the faculties to ensure that they get, get that to close to them. And of course, this is very, very cheap. You can actually get an assignment like this for 30 dirhams. That's it. That's as cheap as it gets. It gets, obviously, depending on your requirements, the urgency, the quality, the quantity, the price increases, but as cheap as 30 dirhams. You could easily get it off of a website. Um, what do they buy? They actually buy everything from essays to reports to dissertations to programs, software programs, slides for presentations, even the scripts that they're going to read out for their presentations. They can buy them off of these mills and that's what they're offering. So, you know, if you have a student who's struggling throughout the semester and suddenly they have a fantastic presentation, you need to be alert that something's gone wrong somewhere. It could be possible that they really worked hard at the end of the semester, or it could be that they're actually buying the slides and the scripts and everything else that goes for that project along with it to make their presentation really flashy. Status of contract cheating around the globe currently, it's, it's not an issue just in one particular area or country or university in the world. It's everywhere, like any kind of uh, academic dishonesty behavior. Um, US actually has certain laws in place that say students cannot buy assignments um, and if they do and if they're caught, then they will be penalized um, under the court. But uh, not all countries have this law. And even with the law, you still have states like California, New York, Texas, um, universities like Stanford, UCLA, Berkeley, NYU, all of them have um, published cases, known cases of contract cheating that, were, that are happening on their campuses by students on a daily basis. You've now we've also got academics because the job market is so bad um, this is a fantastic way to make money they are the ones who know how to write these assignments really well they understand the questions really well and they are offering their services to the students as well for money so we even have academics who are writing these student essays everyone's looking at me going oh my god Zinat, what are you doing to us they're writing the assignments for these students and you know that's making it harder for academics inside the classrooms to figure out whether that assignment is really done by the student or not. Um, in UK, uh, Thomas Lancaster and Robert Clark, they're the ones who coined the term contract cheating 10 years ago. Um, they did a research on just two companies, online companies. They approached the companies. They told them they would obviously keep everything confidential from the company's point of view. They just wanted facts and figures out of that company. How many students are buying essays from these two companies? They found out 20,000 students buy, were buying essays just out of two companies. And there are thousands of companies out there. So you know, you just multiply that by how many ever um, companies there are. And we've got this very, very serious problem in our hands, which we cannot detect. That's, that makes it harder. Um, UK is actually calling for a ban on contract cheating companies, not the students per se, to say that if any company is coming up and offering these kind of services, they are going, it's going to be illegal for them to set up such a company. They still haven't made a ruling on it. They're still thinking about it and still talking about it. Um, again, in UK, students, they're looking at probably fining or 
you know students facing criminal charges for plagiarism um, including contract cheating so if students are found doing this they may actually in the future face uh, criminal charges or face a huge fine so not just within the university but outside in the legal system as well that's what they are pushing towards that's what's happening in UK right now so contract cheating in UAE unfortunately we have no data as of right now because nobody has done this um, study uh, UAE is um, it's a growing industry for education we might be young but we are very strong uh, these are just statistics out of the CAA website there are 74 licensed institutions 935 accredited programs with more than a million higher education students coming from 80 different nationalities so we are a real melting pot for education right here and that means we are have academics coming from different institutions different backgrounds we have students coming from different institutions different syllabuses different practices and different backgrounds all in one area trying to get a degree that's supposed to have a lot of value added to them so it's not just knowledge that we are pertaining we are also giving out this um, integrity culture that they will take out with them and they will probably not work in UE they'll work all over the world so you know it's it's that boomerang effect that we are looking at. So it is a growing strong um, in, in market. And when we think of contract cheating, do we have it? Again, like I said, we don't have any statistics currently that says yes or no. What I do have are some screenshots that my students have very kindly shared with me on how they get approached by these um, companies to try and um, sell their services. So this is one student who was approached and asked if she, if, uh, she was from um, this university. When they said yes, they said we are an India-based team of writers. We have been helping students with assignments. Do you need any help? When the person said no, they said is it no now or is it no never? So they keep that constant communication going with the students. And the way they track them is anytime students put a hashtag UOWD, they know this is a student or something related to a university, they will start inboxing these um, uh, people, the people's accounts. In fact, our university accounts even get inboxed every time there is an assignment. As a comment, these companies pop up and say, hey, we are here, we write really good essays. If you guys need our services, call this number or email us on this um, address. So it's a constant thing that's happening. They get very, very creative, as you can see with that last mem. Uh, because students click mems, you know, that's what it is. They, they want to know about the latest gossip, but when they do go there, uh, look at how creative it is. It says, make assignments great again. Like we couldn't do that with our own abilities. We have to rely on them and their services to make the assignments really great. So our students are getting targeted, but again, we do not really have any data to support what the real situation in the ground is where contract cheating is concerned. If you just go to Google and type essay writing in Dubai, you will get a lot of companies that are offering these services right here in the UAE. They're on Facebook, they're on LinkedIn, they're on, they've ju they're just websites that are offering it. There are real companies who are offering it. In fact, last week when I was walking out of the campus, I had a person slip a flyer to me. By the time I looked up, the person was gone and it was a flyer for an essay writing company. So they're actually scouting our students on our campuses, literally just right between 14 and 15. So it's happening here definitely, but at what scale, we don't know. Uh, this is a wonderful company that actually advertises like this on their website. It says students from UAE, top universities, buy their essays and assignments here. And if you look at it, they've actually got most of the big names in there. So uh, we've been very vigilant with this one company. We've been ensuring they do not have us in there. Um, but if you look at it, you've got AUS, you've got Zayed University, you've got Abu Dhabi, you've got Khalifa. So you even had UAE University up there once. So that's how they're promoting that, hey, the best students from the best universities are using our services. Why not the rest of you? Right? Um, 
at UWD, we started working, looking at this um, problem on contract cheating since last uh, last year. Uh, we celebrated the International Day of Action Against Contract Cheating. This is in conjunction with International Center for Academic Integrity in USA. And what that uh, center did was about three years ago, there is a global day of ethics. On that day in October, they announced that we are also going to be following this particular problem. Because where when you have straightforward plagiarism or cheating, etc., etc., it is so far it is easy to figure it out. But with contract cheating, it is very, very difficult because it's a piece of work that looks amazing. Sometimes it answers the question. So it makes it very, very difficult for academics to pick up on this particular problem. And if students are buying their essays and theses and research, that means they're really not learning anything when they're finally going out there. And the publications that may come off those researches will put a very big question mark on the uh, quality of the education that we are doing. So we need your help. We do want people to please come forward and join us in this project. I'm linked up with Thomas Lancaster, the person who coined the word contract cheating. So we are looking at this problem in the UAE and in the Middle East, but we need more people to join hands. It's not something one person can do because it's campus wide, it's across subjects, it's across levels, it's across um, different degrees. So we need everybody's help to get a clear understanding of what's happening, what's driving it and how can we go about working to curb it and reduce it. Overall, obviously, cheating is on the rise. Same actions, newer processes like contract cheating. It is costing institutions to investigate and penalize, and it is definitely costing students with penalties and reputation of the institutions. However, all of this is still just scratching the surface. So we are still nowhere near understanding the full problem that really exists. Does it even exist? How bad is it? Can we do something about it? And that's where we need your help. These are just uh, some lists of um, references. That's all. Thank you.